Hi everyone, it's Rex. I've been blasting Last Epoch, not only before it came out, but now after it's out, and I've leveled quite a few characters to the very end of the game. My um, Wraith Lord just hit 100, my Warlock is 96, my Falconer unfortunately died on Hardcore at 99.5, and I have several other characters in the 90s from playing this game. It's hard to say that I've leveled up quite a bit um, playing through here, and I want to make a guy that's going to explain to you how to level up really fast, and I want you to understand the different options that you have in the game in order to skip a lot of it. And whether you should or you shouldn't, and I'll make a re recommendation on the path that you should take and why. And then I'm going to show you, um, after your first playthrough, there's a lot of tricks that you can that you can do that's really going to expedite the process if you ever want to make alts and life is very easy. Also, in the end game, there are ways to get to 100 way faster than other people. I'm going to show you right now. So the first thing I want to talk to you about are the different ways that you can get through the game of Last Epoch. There's four different ways. The first way is you can just play the campaign. Acts 1 through 9, kill the final boss. If you do any amount of the quests there, you will get your passives and your idle slots. Remember, when you're playing, I don't know if you can see this, my webcam might be blocking it here. Um, let me see if I can move it for a second. But in the bottom left corner, there is going to be your passive point rewards, and there's going to be your idle slot rewards right here. You need to max these. You need your passives, you need your idols. That's pretty much mandatory for any character you make, the first one, the second one, the tenth one. So how do we get through the game and make sure that we maximize all of these? Well, if you just run through the campaign, Act 1 through 9, you will probably do enough quests to maximize them all. And if you haven't, then in the game, you can just press M, mouse over it, and you can see that there will be extra quest that says this is going to expand your idols. If you don't have them all, then you can max them and then you're done. This is by far the slowest way and this is probably the reason why you're watching this video so you don't have to do this. So this is slow. So the second strategy is a very beautiful one. There's almost no thinking. It's the best probably for hardcore players. And it's also good if you don't want to be a try hard at all. So what you can do is you go through Acts 1 through 7, and 7 is the cold zone. Whenever you see all the cold monsters, you'll know that you're almost done. And the way that I identify that I don't have to go any further is when I kill the giant tree boss. When the tree boss dies and you turn in that quest, you do not have to go any further. The beautiful thing about all three of these strategies that this first strategy does not have is you never have to fight Lagan in the campaign. And Lagan has killed more people than anybody. Pretty much right before you get to Lagan, you can stop. Now, the reason why it's Acts 1 through 7 after you kill the tree boss is because that is the point where you have crossed enough quests where if you did all of the specific ones that require your passive and your idle slots, you will have them completely full. From here, you can go straight to the end game and go to Monoliths. You'll probably be about level 42-ish. And the Monoliths start at 58, but you should be okay to do the first couple of Monoliths. It's going to be a little bit rough in the beginning, and then your levels are going to skyrocket. You do not have to go back to the campaign at all unless you want to. And the reason why you may want to is to kill the final boss because he gives you one to all stats. If it's a character that you love, you're going to take it all the way to 100. You might want to go back and get it for one point of dex, one point of int, one point of strength, etc. So you might say, okay, well, Rax, well, if you go one through seven and you kill the tree, and then you're just going to send me back to do the final boss, okay, so I just do the rest of the campaign and kill the boss? That doesn't help me at all. No. What you will do is once you go into the monoliths, you will eventually get a temporal sanctum key. When you run through the temporal sanctum, at the end of the dungeon, when you walk through the door at the back of the dungeon, it puts you in Act 9 at the end of the game. When you get to Act 9, run in a straight line to the boss. You don't need to do any quests because you have already gotten everything that you need from this strategy. So you can skip the Lagan fight, you can skip all of Act 8, you can kind of skip Act 9 too because you don't have to do any of the quests. You literally run in a straight line 
you're probably going to be over leveled at this point. It's going to be very easy. The final boss is going to be free, and you just get one to all stats. So this strategy is beautiful for hardcore. And if you don't want to think at all, if you have, you just want to, oh, I'm just going to go kill the tree boss and then I'm done. I love this strategy. And this is what I used on my first playthrough when the game weren't live. There is a cuter strategy, which is good for softcore and honestly doesn't require that much more thinking. This strategy, you only go Acts 1 through 5 and you stop at Oracle's abode. When you reach that town, you know that you're done. Because when you reach that town, you get a quest for the Sapphire Tablet. You need to go do that quest, turn it in in this town, and now you've done the bare minimum, the bare minimum amount of the campaign where if you completed all the quests in Act 9, that those two pieces combined would give you all of the idle slots and all of the passive points. So it's exactly the same strategy as this, except you get to skip, I don't know, almost two entire acts additionally. But this time, when you reach Act 9, you're going to have to do all of the side quests, which is going to be fine because you're going to be over-leveled because, once again, you're going to be, gonna be about level 34, I would guess, at this point. And you've got to be strong enough to go do the monoliths at this point. This is the trickier part. You might take some deaths here and there, which is why it's a soft core strategy, but it lets you skip an additional two acts. So it's beautiful. Run through acts one through five, get to Oracle's abode, do the Sapphire tablet quest, go to Monoliths. When you get the Temporal Sanctum key, port to act nine, and this time in act nine, you're going to do the side quest for the idle expansions and the passive points. Then you kill the final boss, you get all the skill points, and you're done. By the way, in all these strategies, going back and killing the final boss is optional. Um, not really here, because you have to go to Act 9 in this, in this spot to get your idols and your passives. But in this one, it's optional. You don't have to go do it if you don't care about those points. The final strategy is you can actually skip a colossal amount of the campaign by doing three dungeons in a row. If you have a key for the Lightless Arbor, then you have a key for the Soulfire Bastion. Then you have a key for the Temporal Sanctum. They pretty much drop you off right before the next dungeon that you have to run, and you can skip a huge amount of the campaign. The problem with doing this is it's a little bit harder to keep track of, okay, which quests do I have to do for my passes and idols, and it's, it's very fragmented. This is why, even though this is the fastest strategy, I don't really recommend it. Because it's, it's you got to really pay attention to all your quests. And you might be like, all right, well, I skip this. And then I skip this. And then I skip this. And then I go to the monolith really early. And I'm getting my ass kicked. And then at some point, okay, now I'm in Act 9. And I did all the quests in Act 9. And I check my quests and my, my idols and my passes. They're not quite there. Okay, but I skipped so much of this. Where exactly is it? Where is this quest? Can, I find this to be very confusing. So even though this is a little bit faster than the other strategies, unless you really know what you're doing, I don't really recommend it. In conclusion, your first playthrough, if you're just having fun, do all the acts and good luck with Lagan, by the way. In hardcore, if you don't want to think, play through the campaign normally until you get to Act 7 and kill the tree. Then you're completely done. You never have to go back. If you want to go back, do the Temporal Sanctum, skip all of Act 9, kill the final boss. This is no thinking. In softcore, you can go Acts 1 through 5, Oracle's Abode, go do the Sapphire Tablet quest, then go to Monoliths. It's going to be rough, but you'll be all right in softcore. It takes some deaths, but you'll level up really quickly. Temporal Sanctum Key got, drops, do it. Now you're in Act 9, do the side quest, kill the final boss, and you're ready to go. Okay, so that's like, that's the setup on your choices within the game. Okay, but what about actual hints in leveling quickly? So I wish there was some awesome trick that I could tell you for your very first playthrough. I really don't know of too many. There's certain things like, oh, at the very beginning of the game, get like silver rings, I think they're called, which have a movement speed implicit on the rings, but you're poor and you don't have any materials and you don't have any twink items. The best advice I can give you on your very first playthrough is run through the zone and if you hit tab, it'll tell you what the area level is. 
and you should absolutely not be fighting everything. And I wouldn't start fighting the monsters until you're like five levels behind the area level. And that's when you'll start to get a lot of bang for your buck. It's, it's pretty good. Another thing is, uh, and maybe you get more comfortable with this as you go, you should be crafting with anything that you have. When you're running through and you're playing, I don't know, a bow build and you get a new bow that has a, a lot higher flat damage on it, you should be immediately pressing F and throwing it into the crafting thing and spending, even if you have only one or two little materials here and there, adding an ignite here, adding a flat damage here, absolutely should do that. You should be vomiting it in the beginning of the game because as you get further, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds um, of different materials to do whatever you want with. Okay, Even if you're not a blaster like me, even if you're more of a casual, you will find you should get a ton of them through Runes of Shattering and just picking them up and doing the monoliths. But, but, there is good news. There is a massive way to save a ton of time. Granted, it doesn't work on your very first playthrough, but it works on every playthrough after, and Last Epoch is about making a ton of characters. So, there is a crafting system that we like to call slamming. Okay? You take a unique, and if the unique drops with legendary potential, you can take an exalted item and merge the two together. The amount of legendary potential that the unique has is how many of the affixes it will take from this exalted item. Here is the key thing to understand. When you mouse over an item here, let me get a good example. This is a perfect example. See in the bottom middle there, it says requires level eight with two legendary potential. If I take a level 80 exalted offhand catalyst and I slam it into this required level eight catalyst, the resulting legendary item that we make will be required level eight. It takes the required level of the unique. This is the biggest hint that you could ever know in Last Epoch about leveling quickly. Because what you do is you go through and you find all the items in the game that have a very low level that do anything for you in the beginning of the game. They might have some movement speed on them. They might have some flat damage. They might have uh, minion damage. They might have physical resist, health, anything like that then you can take a very, very high level exalted item and merge them, and it's still like required level three. You can make a tab of them called Twink, and then you can make things like this, for example. If, imagine if you have minions that do melee damage, how much damage you would get for your character with this. You literally run forward, and they just one-shot everything. Remember, you only have to go through acts either one through seven or one through five, and you're done. And when you're wearing this and you're playing minions, everything dies in one hit instantly. There's nothing they can do. Look at this hammer, for example. One melee physical damage per level, and it starts with a base of plus 68 physical damage. It doesn't even have a required level. You can put it on at the start of the game. A melee character would kill everything instantly. These boots are required level 8. They have 7% movement speed at the top, and they have 17% movement speed on the item, and I slammed 23% more movement speed on them. It's 47% movement speed at level 8. You know how easy it is to run through the campaign when you start to make these items. So, by far the number one hit over any of the strategies that I just showed you, the different ways to go through it, it's just to make twink items because it takes the required level of the unique. You should be making these all the time. When you have a really low level spoon, for example, it has a chance to ignite, chill, shock, freeze, bleed, whatever. Now it has damages over time and more of a chance to ignite. I can use this spoon at the beginning of the game. Works for almost any class and it just applies all the ailments and they die immediately. A super, super godly item, if you find it, is Firestarter's Torch. This thing is the ultimate, ultimate weapon for leveling. I can't wait to start slamming some of these. If you've never tried leveling with this, slam something in here with like damage over time or extra fire damage, and you're going to laugh at how badly you destroy the campaign. It's actually 
it's actually just straight up fun. It makes the campaign fun when you're running around at the speed of light and you're a god and you're destroying everything. Focus on slamming in health, flat damage for either minion or elemental or physical or whatever you might be leveling, and stuff like movement speed and any kind of resistances. All of those are super strong. Okay, so we level through the campaign on our first character. It's slower on our first character. Not a whole lot of hints there. Run through it. Only fight when you're below the required level. Craft often. Now we understand how to get all of our idols and passives with the different strategies. We can kill the final boss if we want to for plus one to all stats. We understand that we must be making twink items. Save all these legendaries and start making these beautiful low-level items that are going to destroy everything, like these boots with 47 movement speed. Now, what about here? When you get to the end of time and you start doing the monoliths, how do you level up as fast as possible? Well, first of all, in the very first monolith, they give you an XP bonus. Take it. Should be using this all the way to 100. I just hit 100 today, so only now am I going to replace this. But there is another massive hint, and this just isn't a hint for leveling. It's a hint for actually playing the game. There is a reward in Monoliths that I think is way better than everything else. I think it's a lot better. To the point where I hope EHG doesn't nerf it. Oh, I'm zoomed in on it right here. And that's these tomes of experience, which I like to call Jim Tomes from baseball, even though I don't really watch baseball. I call them Jim Tomes for fun. Tomes of experience, these little books. Let me tell you how I go through Monoliths. I just run for for the gym tomes whenever i see them just run and i go for this reward i don't read what i don't look at these bonuses i don't read the bad modifiers not even on hardcore i don't do it all i do is i run for this one and then i run for the shortest path for this one and that's the only thing that i ever target i think it's the best reward in the game by far now why well the first reason is is it just levels you up as fast as possible. And these little tomes, they don't have as big of an impact when you first start leveling. They're good. Don't get me wrong. They're good. But around like level 95 to 100, when it gets way harder to level up, these things are godly. In fact, they almost give you more XP than running the actual map themselves. So I would beg you, hunt for these all the time. You could say, okay, well, you're supposed to target the specific uniques that you need for your build and target those rewards. That is true. That's probably, that's up there with how valuable these are. But nothing is as valuable as something that just gives you more passive points. Having all of these passive points is so strong, I, I can't even explain it to you. Someone in my chat, when I was explaining this to people, they said, Rax, you're forgetting something though. You're a blaster. You're going to get to 100. You're forgetting that the vast majority of people are not going to get to 100. So your strategy of just going for this extra XP would not apply to them. And the answer that I gave him shocked him, stopped him dead in his tracks. I said, actually, what you just said only further applies to people not like me. Because I am guaranteed to hit 100 because I it's my job. I'm a content creator. I just play the game all day. I'm going to hit 100 no matter what, unless I die in hardcore. If you are not going to hit 100, these are even more important because there are passive points that you are not going to get. And these will help you get way, way more passive points. And when you get to the end of your tree, these are so valuable. Minion critical strike multiplier, for example, or the picking up this flat damage or picking up all these resistances is massive. It's just a permanent buff that you can never lose. So when you're going through the monoliths, go for these. They're super valuable. The other strategy that people ask all the time is, all right, Rax, so I'm here and I'm in the monoliths. Is there some kind of strategy that I should use in order to maximize my rewards and XP? Yes. And the simple way to remember it is go up the right side. So you start here, and it lets you go from here to here, right side. Then you go here and here. The way that you in unlock the next layer of monoliths is you have to complete these three at the end. 
When you complete these three, you can do empowered monoliths, which you should do immediately because the XP rewards scale tremendously. Then the next question is, well, Rax, when I'm running the echoes, should I go through and kill every single monster? And should I start uh, building the stability? And should I start building the corruption? The answer is no. Do not kill every monster. You need to start in the map, kill some monsters, and the second that you see the objective, run for the objective, complete it, and go to the next one. It's a very simple reason why you get more gym tomes per hour. Simple as that. How many of these you get per hour is the thing that's going to help you the most because you're just going to be leveling faster. You're just going to be getting more passive points, and that's going to make you real strong. <laughs> Running around and killing them and building up a little bit more stability is not going to help you. Another thing is until you're in the empowered monolith, you should not be building corruption in the regular monoliths at all. You should be ripping up the right side as fast as you possibly can. Do not do the echoes more than once. Complete these three, go to the empowered, and then you can go to your favorite one to target farm from your max roll guide. For example, um, for this particular build that I'm doing for Wraith Lord, I need to be living in blood, frost, and death because the final boss drops me my boots that I need and the, the helmet can drop anywhere and the, the helmet and the chest piece can drop anywhere. But the boots can only drop from the boss on blood, frost, and death. So I just live here. Just live in this monolith and I built the corruption, starting to build it up pretty high at 301 on hardcore, still alive. You can see that I just reset the echo. And that's how you're gaining you know, the massive XP, and that's how you're making sure that you can build out your entire character. But even within the monolith, I'm still hunting for the gym tomes all the time. There's another thing that they do for you, by the way, though, if they weren't strong enough, they also help you level your circle of fortune and give you favor. The favor is what you spend at the observatory in order to buy all the prophecies to get all of these godly items. And believe me, these are extremely, extremely strong, especially as you level through these. Okay, I think that's about it. So in summary, there are four different strategies you can use. Run through the campaign, one through Act 7, kill the tree boss, and you're done forever. You can go to Act 9 later via the Temporal Sanctum and kill the boss if you want to. Or you can just go one through five, complete the Sapphire Tablet in Oracle's Abode. Later on, after you're in Monolith, get the Temporal Sanctum key, do Act 9, but this time you have to do the side quest maximize your idle slots, your passive slots, and you're done. The final strategy is doing the Lightless Arbor dungeon into the Soulfire Bastion dungeon into the Temporal Sanctum dungeon. Even though it's the fastest, I actually wouldn't really recommend that strategy. On your first playthrough, not a whole lot of hints I can tell you. Run through the zones until they're way ahead of you and then kill the monsters. Craft early, craft often, craft all the time. You get a new bow, craft on it. You ran out of mats, you only have one mat, you're scared to use it, don't be scared to use it. Use it. You'll get hundreds of them later. Make sure that you make the twink items. Make sure that you keep the two or three legendary potential uniques that are very low level. Slam health, flat damage, resistances, and stuff like that into them so you can obliterate the game. Then when you get to monoliths, go up the right side, go for the tomes of experience, the gym tomes, go for them. And then don't build stability or corruption in them. Don't complete the entire echo. Go straight for the objective so you can maximize your tomes of experience per hour. Get to the end. Complete the last three. Unlock the empowered monolith. Pick the one timeline that's very important for you, whether you want to go through each one and grab a good blessing real quick, and then go into the timeline that's limiting you. For my Wraith Lord, it's the boots that limit me. These drop anywhere. This doesn't. It only drops in one spot. So that's where I live until I find them. And that is, that's every leveling trick, every efficiency that I know about Last Epoch at this time. So I hope that you got something from it. I hope in the future we can learn more tips and tricks about the first playthrough. I know that's probably the information that people want the most. Um, but yeah. I hope this video helped you. Let me know if it did. And this is how I've leveled. This is essentially my almost my third character to 100. Had one die at 99.5, and I had one die at 96. So I already have three characters at 100, and this season just started. So this 
this strategy is working extremely well for me. I hope it works for you too. Thank you.